The activity you have just performed has shown you the basis of plant life. Germination is the process by which seeds grow into plants. Germination requires a specific environment and variations in this environment can result in poor germination or no germination at all. We will now discuss some of these variations and see how they affect germination. All the materials required for this activity are easily available in the house and you will have no trouble arranging them. So let's learn more about the first step in plant life, which is germination. Once you have performed this activity at home with the accompanying instructions or at school under supervision of your teacher, you would be able to see a clear difference in germination rate of the seeds in the three different conditions. Think about the conditions that each of these seeds was subjected to. All the seeds were exposed to different amount of air and water. The seeds at the bottom were completely submerged in water. The seeds in the middle were partially submerged in water and had access to air. The seeds placed on top were exposed to air but had no contact with water. When you compare the germination rate of seeds in these three conditions, you would be able to understand that both water and air are necessary for germination. The seeds that did not have any contact with water failed to germinate. Similarly, the seeds that were submerged in water showed very little germination. This is because water contains a small amount of dissolved air, which has some oxygen, that allowed the seeds to germinate a little. Thus, water and oxygen are two ingredients that are necessary for germination. Let us now think of some other conditions that could affect germination. This activity was performed at room temperature. If you repeat this activity at a cooler temperature, for example, by keeping the setup inside a refrigerator, you would be able to see how temperature affects germination. Similarly, keeping the setup in a dark cabinet would show you if light is required for germination. Finally, you could compare the rate of germination of different seeds to see which seeds germinate faster. You could also try this in distilled water or try growing seeds in, for example, totally different liquid like, say, alcohol. This activity has explained the most fundamental stage of the life cycle of a plant. The concepts that you have understood in this activity are very important for plant growth and cultivation. Without germination, seeds will not give rise to plants. This would mean that we won't be able to cultivate crops or grow flowering plants. Consequently, we will have to look for alternate sources of food and decoration. If we want to avoid this dreaded scenario, it is very important for us to understand the process of germination and the conditions that are necessary for germination. Have you ever planted a seed in the soil or seen anyone do it? If yes, you must have seen how the seed is buried inside soil and then watered. Soil, being porous, allows air to reach the seeds and watering it ensures that the seeds get enough water. Once these two basic conditions are met, the seed germinates in a few days and you see tiny saplings or sprouts coming out of the soil. This is exactly what we have seen in our activity today. By regular watering of planted seeds, we ensure that there is enough but not too much water available for the seed. Too much water in the soil will prevent enough oxygen from reaching the seed and the seed will rot. On the other hand, too little water will not allow germination. Similarly, the seed's oxygen requirements have to be met. If there is not enough oxygen available to the seed, it will not germinate. This is why gardeners regularly aerate the soil with a sharp tool so that air can reach the seeds. Once the seed's requirements for water and oxygen have been met, it pops open and the plant comes out of it in the form of a tiny sprout, very much like a chick breaking out of an egg. Different seeds have different requirements of water and oxygen, hence they germinate at different rates. Seeds of some plants germinate within two days while others may take weeks. Germination of seeds is the first step in the life cycle of most flowering plants. Only after this step can the plant grow and develop to become a full-grown plant or tree. There are some kinds of plants and trees that do not produce seeds. Their life cycle will be covered later in your curriculum. 
some scientific terms. Life cycle is the sequence of structural and functional changes that happen to any organism between the start and end of its life. Germination is the process by which plants grow from seeds or similar structures. A plant embryo is the part of a seed that forms the first parts after germination. The cotyledon is the part of a seed that contains nutrition for the embryo. The seed coat is the outer covering of a seed. Some prerequisites, some basic idea about terms like plants, seeds, pistil, stamen, etc. Idea about various stages in the life cycle of a plant, for example, seed generation, germination, growth, flower production and fruit formation. Some basic knowledge about the different parts of a plant and simple motor skills like handling the seeds, tying threads or rubber bands, etc. Some concepts, so understanding the life cycle of plants. All living organisms undergo a series of developmental changes throughout their life. These changes constitute the life cycle of each organism. There are some kinds of plants that do not produce seeds and have a different process in place of germination. However, for most plants and trees, germination is a part of their life cycle. We will now see the various stages of the life cycle of these plants. The first stage is the seed. The seed is formed by a plant in order to start a new life cycle. Seeds contain mainly two parts, the plant embryo that contains all components that will be required to make a full plant later on, and the cotyledon that stores food for the embryo. These two parts of the seed are enclosed in the seed coat that serves to protect the contents of the seed. The second stage is germination. This stage is characterized by a small sprout-like structure popping out of the seed coat. A very interesting thing about germination is that it only occurs after the specific requirements of the seeds are met. And you would have noticed that the seed produces a root and a shoot when it germinates. The root points downwards and is eventually what will draw water from the soil. The shoot points upwards looking for the sun and air which will eventually turn into the stem and then of course leaves and branches etc. The third stage is growth. Germination is followed by a rapid growth phase where the root and the stem grow in size and leaves appear. The leaves start preparing food in the presence of light by a process known as photosynthesis. The roots go deeper in the soil and absorb water and minerals. The stem elongates and bears more leaves and eventually flowers appear on the plant. Fourth stage is reproduction. Flowering is followed by reproduction in plants. The male part of a flower is called the stamen and it produces pollen. The female part of the flower is called pistil and it contains eggs. The color and scent of a flower is a means to attract insects, birds, even small mammals, amphibians, etc. that will help in reproduction by carrying pollen of one flower to other flowers. This process is called pollination. Once the pollen land on the pistil, they fuse with the eggs and this process is called fertilization. Fertilized eggs become seeds and in some plants part of the pistil becomes the fruit with seeds inside. The fifth stage is seed dispersal. The final stage in the life cycle of a flowering plant is seed dispersal. There are many ways of spreading seeds. For example, some seeds are carried by wind or water, while some others are carried by animals and birds. Once the seeds land on the ground and find suitable conditions, they germinate and a new life cycle starts. Refer to our seed dispersal models activity and topic guide for more fun and details about this last phase in the life cycle of a plant. Now to understand the conditions required for germination, in this activity you saw that water and oxygen are essential for germination. Let us now understand why these are so important. Water plays a very important role in germination. If you have a close look at some types of seeds like Bengal gram, lentils, etc., you will notice that they are very dry and rigid. When seeds absorb water, they swell and their seed coat becomes soft. Water starts the metabolic process inside the seed that leads to germination. 
However, too much water isn't good for the seed. If there's excess of water, like in the seeds at the bottom of your tectivity setup, germination will not proceed. This is because excess water limits the availability of oxygen, which is also an important requirement for seed germination. Oxygen is required by seed to carry out its metabolic processes that activate the enzymes and break down complex compounds. Without oxygen, many enzymes in the seed will not function and as a result, the seed wouldn't germinate. Insufficient oxygen, as in the case of the seeds at the bottom of your tactivity setup, will result in incomplete germination. There are some other conditions that are essential for seeds, for example, temperature and light. Most of the plants have seeds that germinate in ambient temperature conditions, so about 16 to 25 degrees Celsius. However, some plants may require a higher or lower temperature to germinate. Light is usually not considered to be important for germination, but it is very important for growth of plants. In order to know the requirement of light for germination, you should perform this activity in a dark cabinet and compare the germination with the apparatus set up in light. It is also important to note that the nutrition in a seed is enough to nourish plant growth for only so long, depending on the size of the seed, rate of growth, etc. But eventually, the external requirement of energy has to come from sunlight or powerful enough sources of artificial light. The basics of germination that you have just learned are very important for agriculture and horticulture. Since the seeds of different plants will have different requirements for germination, knowing these requirements are vital. Understanding the requirements of different seeds allows farmers and florists to grow them in optimum conditions and to obtain a good yield of cereals, fruits and flowers. Germination is also an important process in the food and beverage industry. Germinated cereals and seeds have more nutritional value and are easier to digest. Germinated cereals can be dried and used for making a variety of beverages like malted shakes, health drinks like Horlicks, Milo, etc. Finally, lentils and seeds like black gram and peas can be germinated at home and used for making salads and other yummy dishes like sandwiches. Ask your mom or dad to make sprouted lentil salad and discover a yummy new taste. In fact, germinate a variety of edible seeds and make your own salad to serve the entire family. We hope that you now know the conditions that are essential for seed germination. By trying different variations of this activity, you will be able to know whether germination is affected by other conditions. We encourage you to plant some seeds in a planter with soil and water it regularly. You will be amazed to see the seed transform into a tiny sapling and then into a plant. You will thus witness the life cycle of the plant in your own home. Have fun and marvel at the wonder of nature and our planet, which is the only place we know of so far in the universe where life exists. And the plant seed is the most basic and fundamental unit of that unique feature of our planet, which we must cherish and protect. Goodbye.